nothing in your life. <laughs> Am I working now? Okay. All right. Including a microphone not working is inconsequential. Everything happens for a purpose. And I told my own officers, you know, maybe you don't turn right because that's the way you're supposed to go home. Maybe that's the way you're supposed to go in life. Well, we don't know what happens left, but we go right because that's the way we're supposed to go. October 1st, 2016, I, I found myself very realistically in that position. Uh, that morning, I had just worked 16 hours, and I was on my way home. <sighs> Much to my chagrin, I was, saw a car traveling in front of me. He was all over the road. He looked like he'd clearly just got off work, provided his job was drinking Jim Beam for a living. <laughs> Uh, I thought I had a drunk driver. So I found myself that morning at an intersection. Now for me, the way home was right. But he had his blinker left. So I did what you're supposed to do when you're a police officer. It doesn't matter how tired you are, you do the right thing. So when the light turned green, I made a, no, I'm kidding, I made a left. <laughs> a joke. I made a left. And just as I was about to cut the blue lights on that morning, I noticed something through the back window. I saw a hand sticking up in the air. And I could see what he was doing. Oh, he's just texting. Suddenly, a sigh of relief came over me. My already long shift is not about to become a lot longer. He's just texting and driving. I'll just say, hey, man, don't do that. It's dangerous. And then we'll be on our way. So I cut the blue lights on and pulled this uh, car over. When I walked up to the window, what I saw would forever change my life. And it would touch me in ways that I didn't know were possible. When I walked up the window that morning, I came face to face with a 18 year old African American, a kid. A teenager. He looked at me and he was terrified. He looked at me not because he was nervous because he got pulled over. I've been nervous, I get pulled over. <laughs> he was scared. He was scared for his life. It really hit me hard at that moment. At that moment, I was no longer a police officer. See, this is just the outer shell of who, what I do. But that's not who I am. Who I am is a father, a husband, a human being. Just like that young man. And I sat there and I watched him with his hands in the air, surrendering when I asked him nothing. And he said, what do you want me to do, officer? And it hurt me what I was seeing. And I said, I don't want you to get hurt. So I wasn't a police officer that moment. I was looking into his big brown eyes that looked just like my five-year-old son's. I said, I don't want you to get hurt. And he said to me, you want me to get out of the car, officer? And that's when I realized he thought I said, I don't want to have to hurt you. I got in this job to be a good guy. That, that hurt me. And so what I replied to him that morning, I looked at him and I said, no, I don't want you to get hurt. I, I don't want you to text and drive. I don't want you to get in a car accident. I want your mom to watch her baby boy grow up and be somebody. I want you to do something in life. I just don't want you to get hurt. And that's the first time he relaxed. That's the first time he relaxed and calmed down. And um, you know, after that, there was no more police action for me. I'd done enough. And we parted ways that morning. It bothered me. Remember I said I worked 16 hours. It would be hours until I could fall asleep that morning. Therapeutically, I posted that encounter on Facebook. 
because it needed to get out there. It needed to be said, and I needed to say, I don't care who you want to blame. This is not good. I went to sleep. I woke up six or eight hours later and discovered it had been shared 20,000 times. It, it, uh, I didn't know you could max out friend requests, all these types of things. <laughs> uh, ultimately, that Facebook post would uh, be shared 400 million times around the world. Thank you. <laughs> but I want to tell you the most important thing that I saw that morning. And that was when I looked in that young man's eyes, who was terrified. I saw something that we have all forgot. I'm calling you all out on it because we forgot it. There's something inside all of us. Call it whatever you want. There's something inside all of us, that spark, that thing that animates us, that brings us to life. That, that is deeper than what we see outside of each other. It was makes us different from every other species on this entire planet. And it is the same. It's life. And it's the ability to have conversations like we're having now. And so we talk about bridges. Let's talk about bridges. That's how you breach a gap when you have conflict, right? We got to get to the other side. Well, I want everybody in this audience and everybody who sees this to know. When it comes to the bridge and getting along with people and resolving conflict, we do not have to build it. It exists. We already have the connection. So the challenge is for all of us, all of us, I include myself in this with every one of you because I want this to be all of us, be willing to cross that bridge have the courage to cross that bridge. And I don't mean you have to run across the whole thing. Be willing to at least meet people halfway. And remember that we truly all, all share something. And so my challenge to everyone, courage, willingness, and look at each other. I don't care what's on the outside of each other. Look at each other and look for that spark. And I promise you, enough of us do that and we spread that, we can solve a whole lot of problems, except for a microphone malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>